most statistics courses end up talking about confidence intervals and often end up with a chapter devoted specifically to confidence intervals. Uh, but more correctly, that chapter is typically called along the lines of st statistical intervals um, based on a single sample. The important part of the interval discussions is that you're dealing with a single sample, not necessarily that you're dealing with confidence, because confidence is just one kind of a scenario that people are typically dealing with. So for the purposes of this little demonstration video, I'm looking at the DeVore text. Uh, specifically, I'm going to work with um, example 7-14 um, as the example here. Um, the numbers themselves aren't really important. It's the trend that matters. But if you want to go follow the math and see where some of these data points came from, that's the example I'm going to use to actually make my points here as I go through. So prior to talking about statistical intervals, intervals, you typically go through a chapter on point estimation. Point estimation is about being able to say something about your population of data from a single sample. Uh, unfortunately, it's limited to only one um, data point. So to, to do a point estimate okay, of data in your process, um, in our example, our process point estimate is 14,532. Uh, so that might have been the point estimate mean of the um, interval that we're dealing with. Um, and here in this chapter, we're going to take that point we had earlier, and we're going to do some other things with it. Okay, So one thing we want to be able to do is establish the confidence interval around that data. Okay, so the confidence interval tells us not just what the point estimate of something is, but what's our confidence that we actually have that correct value. So when we calculate that, that's based on uh, a, a Z factor or a T factor, depending on what we're trying to do. And in our example in the text, the confidence interval might be 13,437 to 15,000. 627. Like I said, the actual values don't matter for this discussion, but if you want to be able to follow this along in your text, I want to use the values that were there. Uh, so we might have a 95% confidence that the mu of our population is going to be um, in that range. So we're dealing with different kinds of data values as we go. So remember, the point estimate was based on our x bar value um, and our confidence interval. We're really trying to figure out where the mu is. So the mu could be estimated on a point using x bar, but we're much better off saying not just that we think the mu is 14,532, but that we're 95% confidence it falls between 13,400 and 15,600. So confidence intervals is a large part um, of what this chapter is all about as we've been going through it. Um, but once you get past the confidence interval, there are other questions you want to be able to ask. Uh, one is called the prediction interval. Okay. Prediction isn't about the data points you have. It's about the next data point. What's the next data point going to be? So if I've measured you know, the height of 50 people walking past me and I come up with an average and think I'm estimating the average for the population of people, um, what is the next person who walked past me going to, going to be height? And chances are they're not going to be the average height. They're going to be part of a sampling that, thanks to the central limit theorem, would have converged on x bar. Uh, but they're not actually going to be a given height we want. So there's going to be more variability in that next person to walk along. So the prediction interval, when you look at the calculation, comes out at 10,017 to 19,048. Um, so the prediction interval is wider because we don't know as much about what's going to happen when the next person walks through the room uh, or the next widget gets measured coming off the line. Uh, because here we're not talking about mu or something that's governed by the um, central limit theorem. We're really talking about x sub n plus 1. So we've got this set of values that we've measured to get x bar based on n values in our sample. Um, what we're really saying is, what will the next person be? And the next person could be larger or smaller than the confidence interval of the mean because they won't be the average person. We're looking at a specific data point. We're not averaging things where the central limit theorem uh, would be of any help as we go through. And then the additional types of intervals we want to be able to calculate include the tolerance. Okay, the tolerance interval yeah, it says basically, what's my quality level going to be, or um, how many of how many people actually fall within this range as we go through. So the tolerance interval at ninety five percent for this set of data turned out in our text to be eight thousand five hundred and sixty four to twenty thousand five hundred. Okay, as I go through. So that's a much wider interval because here I'm trying to make an estimate of what 
uh, will happen over the range of data. So x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 to x sub n. So I'm making predictions about what percent of all of my observations will fall within a certain range. So remember, those observations got averaged in my sample. So the point estimate was a narrowing to the, uh, the average that I go through. So if you look at this basic curve, you see that you, you, you got increased variability as you see your way through all of this data, but they serve different purposes. And one of the problems we run into in engineering, and particularly in management of engineers, is that management often uses the wrong estimates. They get a confidence interval of the mean, which we tend to spend a lot of time talking about, and then they're sure they understand what the next thing coming off the line is going to be or what their quality level will be. Uh, so my mean might fall between 13.4 and 15.6, um, but 90% of all my data might fall between 8,500 and 20,000. So I've got to look at that as I go through. So this calculation of the confidence interval was based on T alpha over 2 um, V for my uh, degree of freedom, my N minus 1, if you will. Uh, so there's a multiplier effect that based on my sample size and the level of confidence I want, that width is going to get wider as I go. But still, it's the confidence interval in a single value, mu, so it doesn't get as wide as others. The prediction value, uh, on the other hand, has even less, more variability built into it because the sample was for the first n observations. So we have a certain amount of variance that goes into our original sample that's already accounted for in the confidence interval. But when we go get one more data point, we're actually increasing the variance of what we're looking, looking at. So you'll find in the equation that there's a multiplier here where we take our standard deviation from the original sample, and you'll see a term in the formula where you have to multiply that by 1 plus 1 over n. So that 1 plus 1 over n, it recognizes the fact that we already had a certain variance in standard deviation for the first n data points. Uh, the next data point, the x n plus 1 data point, is independent of those. So it's going to add variability to the process. So the variability of the prediction interval can, is potentially significantly larger than the variability of the confidence interval that went into it, both because I have more data points, so I have more variation, plus the confidence interval was only trying to predict a single value, mu. Uh, and mu is an average of lots of values, so the central limit theorem will pull that data toward the mean. We don't have that going on in the prediction interval uh, because we're simply looking at a single data point. What's the next data point going to give us? And in terms of the tolerance, now we're talking about lots of data points. What percent of my information will fall within? So for that, you typically have to look up a critical value. There's a critical value that multiplies that. If I use, if I look up in the table, and the table in the Devore text is uh, table A6 in the appendix, but the factors for calculating this are different than T. So this one would be 2.903. That gives me 95% confidence that 95% of the data will fall within the interval laid out by those numbers. So I need to have a 95% a quality level that establishes my tolerance, and I want to be 95% sure that I have, have met that tolerance. Um, I could, again, vary either of those percentages that I go through. So the confidence and the prediction intervals were only based on a single percentage. What's my level of confidence in that process? 95% prediction confidence and 95% confidence of the mean. But in tolerance, I have two different percentages going on. How many of my data points will fall within the interval, and how confident am I that that is true? And that double whammy of percentages widens the extreme. So whatever the t value was up here when I calculated my confidence interval, it will be larger when I get to this 2903. So the, the information in table A6 um, gives you the critical values for doing that calculation. And the critical value you get, in this case 2903, will always be larger than the original t that you use for the confidence interval to allow for that extra variation that takes place because we have two different unknowns we're trying to solve for. So when you look at a chapter on statistical intervals recognize that there is more than just confidence intervals. We might spend 90% of our time talking about confidence intervals, uh, but it's really many more than that that we use in our engineering. The math is a little different, the formulas are a little different, but if you understand one, you can work with the others. The other is that the confidence 
interval is not just the focus of the chapter anymore. So it's we talk about statistical intervals of a single sample. Notice it's not statistical intervals of the mean. This example is based on the mean value. Uh, but toward the end of these chapters, you'll tend, tend to see confidence and prediction and tolerance um, intervals on variances, on standard deviations, on all the other kinds of point estimates. You can have this discussion of confidence, prediction, and tolerance interval for any of the variables that you could have produced a point estimate for in the prior chapter, which is a lot more than just the mean.